the graph of the function y equals f of x is shown below. Part A. Write the function y equals f of x using the absolute value function. Part B. Find f of f of 1. Well, in this particular case, you can use the fact that the absolute value function is easy to graph and do some rigid transformations on that absolute value function to wind up with the function we have right here. Let me give some detail to that process. So let's start out here by drawing the absolute value function. That is just y equals absolute value of x. It looks something like this right here. I may not have it quite right, but that's pretty close to y equals the absolute value of x. Now what we want to do is we want to manipulate this function a little bit until we can get it into this form. Now there's no specific order that you have to use here, but the one that makes the most sense to me is to translate this function two units to the right. And the name of that new function is going to be y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. Go ahead and draw that in. So that is going to be shifted 2 to the right. So it's going to look something like that. And this will also be shifted 2 to the right. So something at that level. Now remember, the goal is to get to here. So the next thing you might want to do is a reflection at this point. So if we take this absolute value function here and reflect it across the x-axis, then it'll be headed down. And the way you do that is you draw the function y is equal to the opposite of the absolute value of x minus 2. That's the move going from this function right here to the one that is reflected across the x-axis. and Let's draw that. That's going to start here, come down this way, and come down this way. Finally, the last step, remember we got the different pieces here. Here's what, here's what we started with. We started with this one right here. We shifted him two to the right, and then we reflected him down to here. So what is the last step? The last step is to take this function right here and simply move him down one. Well, when he moves down one, then we'll get the function that we want. And to do that, what you need to do is simply subtract one to that last function we wrote down. So this is going to be minus the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 1. So there is your function and that solves part A. We have written y equals f of x using the absolute value function. That's what it looks like. Now there's two different ways of doing part B. So let me do that off to the side here. When you see f of f of 1, first way is geometric. And what you do is you start on the inside and you say, all right, what is f of 1? Well, here is the function f. And if you want f of 1, you go to x equals 1 and you go down and you see that that is equal to negative 2. So we now want f of negative 2. And what is f of negative 2? Again, if you go to negative 2 on the x-axis, and you go down to the function of interest, that is equal to negative 5. So that is one way of solving part b. The second one is a little more analytic. You plug directly into this function right here. That is the function of interest, right? So we know if I were to write this out as y equals f of x, that is the opposite of x minus 2 in absolute value minus 1. So what we're going to do there is we are going to simply plug into that function 
directly. So when we want f of f of 1, we start on the inside just like before and calculate f of 1. Well, what is f of 1? It is 1 minus 2, which is negative 1, and the absolute values turn that into a positive 1. And that the negative out front here gives you a negative 1 minus 1, which is a negative 2. So this will be f of negative 2. Look up above. This looks promising, doesn't it? And then from there, what you want to do is you want to plug negative 2 back into the function f, which is down here. So when I plug in a negative 2, I get negative 2 minus 2, which is a negative 4. The absolute values make that into a positive 4. But there's a negative out front, so this is negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. So regardless of whether you do this second part, geometrically, or you plug into the function that was derived in part A, either way, you're going to find out that f of f of 1 is equal to negative 5.